Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm sitting in a first generation Tesla Roadster, which is pretty exciting. It's something I've wanted to do for several years, and I have the opportunity to drive this for a couple of weeks, which is pretty exciting. I managed to swap my Model S uh, with a friend who needs a bigger car to go on a family road trip. Um, as you can see, it's pretty cramped. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's pretty tiny. The way we're sitting, we're basically sitting on the floor of this car. So the only way for the legs to go is to go absolutely straight. It's very similar to sitting in the go-kart. And uh, there's like literally no center divider here. It's like sitting in an airplane that can touch his arm. Yeah. That's how tiny it is. Yeah, pretty exciting car. Uh, it's got some awesome driving feel. The steering is super tight. The brakes are very tuned. And we're just pretty excited to drive this around. We're in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're going to take this down to Big Sur, which is a bit of a longer trip and do some charging along the way and just kind of see what it's like to be a Roadster user in 2022. So that's all we got for now. And I hope you enjoy this video. The first thing we did was visit Tesla HQ in Palo Alto. This is a Tesla corporate office and on the way to Skyline Boulevard in the mountains. It made for a scenic drive and a good chance to get to know the car. Our next drive will be more ambitious as we head into Big Sur, traveling through Monterey and spending two nights along Moonstone Beach. Before that, the car would need a good charge. The Tesla Roadster was unveiled before the current North American standard for AC charging, known as J1772, became available. Thankfully, Tesla had a say in the standard's definition, and the Roadster charging protocol is forwards compatible with J1772. A simple passive adapter allows these old EVs to charge from modern chargers. With a full charge, we left our home and headed towards Big Sur. Our first charging stop was just 20 miles from home in Los Gatos, where we grabbed a tea to wake us up for the day. It was at this point that we made use of the cup holder. I hesitate to call it that because it looks more like a cup stabilizer to me, but it gets the job done. Everything about this car is very compact and very deliberate. Our second charging stop for the day was a longer one. We drove for roughly 60 miles, eating up nearly half of our range, after struggling with the SemiConnect app for some time, we were able to get a good charge before heading into Big Sur. After a break for lunch and a couple of hours of charging, we headed further south on the Pacific Coast Highway. The car handled the countless switchbacks and hairpin turns with ease. The Roadster has exceptional handling thanks to the lightweight chassis, grippy tires driven by a rear motor, and a low center of gravity. We made one final charging and rest stop at the Hearst Castle Visitor Center. There are eight 40 amp charging stalls at this location, so we took the opportunity to stretch and use the restroom before the last few miles to our hotel. We arrived with plenty of range to spare and enjoyed our short vacation. We had favorable marine layer conditions and a new moon, which allowed us to do some really fun astrophotography along the beach. Unfortunately, the EV Connect charger that was installed at our hotel had a problem for our second evening, so we were unable to charge up to 100%. We had enough range to make it into Monterey and decided to start our trip home from there. We stopped for a couple more glamour shots along the way home, and the trip was otherwise uneventful. We charged up at the same SemiConnect charger in Monterey while eating lunch. We located an 80 amp charger just 45 miles from our first charge stop in Monterey, and had 55 miles of range after eating our lunch. We decided to skip ahead to reduce time spent waiting to charge, since the next charger would be nearly three times faster than the current. Thanks to some strong headwinds coupled with highway speeds, we ran into trouble. She won't go. No, it's on the floor. Yeah. No. Oh my god, that's scary. Should we double charge? Yeah. We lost speed until we were stuck at 45 miles per hour on a fairly steep grade with just 10 kilowatts of power available. No, we're gonna do this for five miles. While well, we're climbing, that's the problem. Uh, we're gonna go down on it. Better keep it going, because we're gonna be so far ahead. Never expected that. 
We were able to get back up to highway speed after cresting the hill. We took the next available freeway exit and then took local roads to the next charger, which only added a couple of minutes to our trip. Holy shit. That's crazy. That's crazy. This doesn't even know that. Oh, he does. At very, very low battery, which tells me we are very, very low right now. Oh, we got all the power in the world back now. We spent a few minutes searching for this elusive 80 amp charger on the hotel property and eventually located it in one of the parking garages. This charger gave us a super fast charge. We reached 50% in just one hour while checking out the beach trail. This was enough range for us to make the final trip home and once again, had plenty of range to spare. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video and our tales from the road. Uh, as you can see, we got ourselves into a bit of trouble with this older car. Um, we didn't quite understand uh, how the battery works at low state of charge but now that we have the car better I, I think we would do a little better next time around yeah I mean in our modern Tesla the power limit does not kick in until it's like one to two percent basically very desperate but this time it had literally 10 miles left still that's why I guess we were really caught by surprise yeah yeah but overall it's been a really fun experience uh, we had no trouble finding chargers for this thing and the advantage of having a small battery in a really efficient car is that level 2 charging can actually take you pretty far um, especially that 16 kilowatt charger that we ended up using at the hotel, that was a really big win for charge speed. Um, but even the lower speed chargers, when you're only using 200 watt hours per mile roughly, you know, you're getting 5 miles per kilowatt. So it's quite a bit faster than the modern cars where they're using typically around 300 watt hours per mile or maybe 280 or 260. Depends on the size of your car, but um, this is definitely one of the more efficient EVs on the road. So it's been really great. We've really enjoyed it driving this car. Uh, we're kind of sad to give it back on Thursday. Maybe we'll think about buying one sometime for ourselves. <laughs> We've already started browsing. Yeah, I don't know if we will do that. They're getting quite expensive and I think they're a little temperamental, but it is really tempting and something to think about more seriously perhaps in the future. Um, that's all we've got for this video. Hope you enjoyed our travels from the road. If you want to see more from us, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Mostly this channel is all about engineering projects, but sometimes we do car stuff too, so that's always fun. And if you want to leave a comment or tell us something about this car that we didn't know, feel free to leave a comment below and like this video. It definitely motivates me to do this more. That's all we've got for now. And so with that, we'll see you next time.